Stainless Law here with Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use M Tracker 3D to track your footage and put some 2D text animated in it just like this. Let's go ahead and get started. Inside Apple Motion, I have an image sequence that I have imported into my scene. To start tracking our clip, I'll go to my Filters tab, Motion VFX, and drag and drop M Tracker 3D directly onto my clip. Next, click the track button. As a tip, when you are tracking, make sure you trim your clips to the total duration that you want to track. Once the analysis is complete, click the target icon to set your 3D point in your scene. I'll choose this point here, and when you're done, just click the target icon again to release the targeting feature. Next, we'll need to drag the animated camera from the library Favorites M Tracker 3D into our project. So inside our library, we'll navigate to Favorites, M Tracker 3D, and the newly created 3D group and camera. I'll drag those into my project, and I'm given a dialog box. This lets me know that cameras only affect 3D groups. Do you want to switch your 2D to 3D groups? Well, yeah, I do. However, all my footage will go dark. And that's okay, because it turned our 2D footage into a 3D layer. Click this to turn this back into a 2D layer. Clicking on the 3D group will reveal the track point that it's created, and pulling through my timeline, I can just review to make sure that it is in line exactly where I tracked it. We'll come back to that in one second. First, let's go ahead and set up some text layers. Using the text tool in Apple Motion, I'll put in some text into my scene and make some adjustments in my inspector. Next, I want to make sure that I reset these coordinates. When I reset these coordinates, now it will use that 3D group's point. So check this out. So now that is going to be locked on to that point. However, that's not exactly where I want it. To get this text into position, I'm going to select it inside that 3D group. You don't wanna just grab it and move it anywhere in the canvas because that'll actually move all three axes at the same time. Doing this might throw off your tracking. Instead, use either the inspector controls or the individual axes on the 3D gizmo to move them on individual planes. At least for me, this gives me a lot more control because I'm only dealing with one axis at a time. I'll just review that and see how it looks. I want this to animate in, so let's use a behavior. I'll go into my library, and inside the behaviors, I have a specific one I'm looking for. It's called gather in. And so I'm just gonna type in gather and drag gather in right into my timeline. Let's check this out. That's looking cool. But I want this to be a little faster, and I don't want it to be there the whole time. So let's work with this a little bit. I'll shorten this to about eight frames. I'll go to about two seconds and six frames. And this is where I want this text to animate out. So I'll click the text layer and hit the O key to trim my layer to that. Next, I'll duplicate my gather in and drag it towards the end. If I play this back, it's just gonna animate in again, and that's not what I want. So we'll have to go inside the inspector, and to have this animation reverse, I'll change the sequencing to two. Hey, that's looking pretty great. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm gonna Command D to duplicate this. And next, I'll work with this positioning and we'll change out this text and a little bit of formatting. This is obviously going to be our boxing champ. So let me get this in position and change out the alignment with the text. Let's make one more of these. I'm gonna take this one and duplicate it once more. And this layer will be for our boxing champs, name Jack Armstrong. 
And because all our text layers are short, I can just drag this one all the way to the end here and now it won't animate in till the end. After I've set up my formatting options in my position, I'm going to just move this out a little bit further than our other text so it's a little bit further in front. You'll notice I scaled down this text a little bit because as I'm moving it closer in the Z position, it's going to look larger. So I want to make sure that it's fairly small as it's still going to be moving towards that camera. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting with some lighting. I'm going to come up to my objects and we'll add a point light to this. And I'm going to put this in the 3D group and reset the transformation just so that way I know where it is in my scene. That's going to make it a little easier to work with. Now that it's in my scene, I can see that it'll affect my text layers. So we'll drag this one pretty far out here. And we'll make this one really high up. And you may be asking, why are we putting this light in here if we're putting it really far away and not really making it light up our text. And the reason for that is because when there's no light on there, it will give total darkness. So having just a little bit will add a nice shadow to our text. Let's duplicate this with keyboard shortcut command D. And I'll reset this transformation one more time. And this time, let's put our lights right up here so it looks like it's lighting up some of our text. Now, depending on the positioning of your light in your text, you may need to move your lights to achieve the look that you want. And you're not limited to just moving the lights too. You can also bump up the intensity quite a bit. And because our footage is a 2D layer, it's not gonna be affected by those lights. This is a good time to do some house cleaning and rename our layers properly. Whenever you start working into a project, it's always a great idea to do this as it'll help your organization, especially if you have to come back to a project. One of the great benefits of using Apple Motion is using behaviors because with behaviors, I don't have to retime things with keyframes if I want to start changing my animation. It's really a matter of just dragging our behaviors to whatever position we want. At this point, let's go ahead and add a little bit more style to our text to make the text merge into our scene a little bit. It's a little too clean. So I'm gonna put on a Gaussian blur into my 3D group. This will affect all my text layers inside there because our text is almost a little too clean and too perfect. Adding a little bit of blur will just soften the edges a bit. The next consideration is adding a little bit of noise to our text layers. And the reason being is that all footage will have some sort of noise to it, even if it's a little small. And adding a tiny bit of noise to our text layers can better match our text grain to our footage grain. Let's take a closer look with the magnification. You can see the added noise I put in here. Right now, that's a little too much noise. Let's pull this down quite a bit and even turn down the mix so it blends a little bit more seamlessly. Inside your Layers tab, you can preview all the effects by clicking them on and off using this button. And one final effect that I think will blend things a little bit better is a pixelate. I'll put this one on that group and the same process, we'll go into the inspector and then just dial it down quite a bit. I'll reset my magnification to fit so we can see the entirety of our scene. So there is a quick way to use MTracker 3D to track some text directly into your scene inside Apple Motion. Again, my name is Stanislaw Liberto with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.